These are some of the most popular topical finasteride formulations available out there, and although they do work for hair loss prevention, the problem is solutions higher than 0.1% will start to have a significant impact on DHT level suppression, almost comparable when taking 1 mg oral finasteride. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to minimize the side effects from oral finasteride, but using it topically won't be enough, because you also need to be using the right amount and the right concentration. Hey, welcome to Let's Get Hair. My name is Matt. I've been personally alternating between low-dose oral finasteride and low-dose topical finasteride over the last six years. And with this channel, I've been helping men avoid costly pitfalls when regaining hair, getting their hair back with hair transplants. For more personalized advice, check out the link below where you can make an appointment with me one-on-one. -on -one. Based on the studies that reviewed the best topical finasteride concentrations for maximum scope, scalp DHT suppression and minimal blood DHT suppression, I came up with something like an optimal microdosing range where you would like to be if you want to minimize the side effects from finasteride but simultaneously maximize its efficacy. One drawback of the fact that topical finasteride is not FDA approved is consumer confusion. If we look at the solutions available across the board, we will see that they all have different concentrations from 0.025% to 0.1, 0.25 or 0.3% or even highly dosed liposomal solutions of 1% or 2.5%. Knowing this about topical finasteride, here is where we need to be careful in order to avoid number one, overdose and thus increasing potential side effects from topical finasteride, and number two, using very little of it and getting little to no efficacy in return. In this video, we will be looking at three studies on topical finasteride that helped me create a solid microdosing protocol on topical finasteride. And at the end, I will also have a free calculator for you guys where you can plug in all of your values regarding your topical finasteride routine, and that will tell you whether you are in the microdosing range and how to optimize if you're not. But let's follow step by step so you can see how I designed this tool for you. Study number one, 1996 study is the first ever study on topical finasteride that tested 0.005% topical finasteride on androgenic alopecia patients. It was a placebo-controlled study. The study, however, had a ratio of 28 males and 24 females, so it's almost like a 50-50 ratio. And for more credibility, I'd like this study to be 100% male study, since men have more aggressive hair loss than women, and the onset of androgenetic alopecia also happens earlier on in a man's life compared to females. Nonetheless, subjects were randomized to receive either 1 milliliter topical finasteride 0.005% solution or placebo twice daily to the affected scalp region for 16 months. Now, before we go further, this is important. What happens if you use topical finasteride once daily versus twice daily? In this case, the 0.005% concentration, if used twice daily, becomes a 0.01% for the whole day. Essentially, you are doubling your daily finasteride load that I refer to as DFL. And now we only need to remember it and let's go to the results of the study because this term will be important for optimizing of your topical finasteride protocol with my custom-made calculator later on. So the results of the study were positive. No significant change in plasma levels of total testosterone testosterone, free testosterone, and DHT between the groups. That means that the DHT levels of treatment groups behaved almost the same as the placebo group DHT levels, which is very good. At six months, researchers observed a significant decrease in the rate of hair loss in the topical finasteride compared to the placebo group. Another great point. Number three, patients' opinions on the effectiveness of the treatment was generally positive among the finasteride group, with 73% treated patients reporting high effectiveness compared to 60% of placebo patients reporting no effect. To conclude, this study has successfully verified that a 0.01% topical finasteride daily concentration was safe because it minimally affected the systemic DHT levels. And the effectiveness was also clearly demonstrated by the fact that after six months there was reduced shedding and by the 16 months the treated patients observed better effectiveness compared to the placebo group after 16 months. Now the second study is going to be one of the most important foundational research studies on topical finasteride 
finasteride because it's the first one that was a dose response study on topical finasteride that achieved significant scalp DHT reductions at higher dosages of topical finasteride. In this study, they used a 0.25% topical finasteride solution and applied it to four groups in four different ways. First was one tenth, one fifth, one third and two fifths. And here we can see all of those four dosing variations and how much oral finasteride equivalent each of these represent. And now let's cut to the chase. The most favorable profile of this study had the first two groups where, not surprisingly, they used the lowest amount of the topical solution, 0.25% uh, finasteride. They used 0.1 milliliter and 0.2 milliliter respectively. In other words, one tenth and one fifth of one milliliter solution. The systemic DHT levels were suppressed by minus 24% and minus 26% and the scalp DHT levels by 47% and 52% respectively after just one week. However, if you used the whole one milliliter of the 0.25% solution, representing roughly 2.22 milligram of finasteride, your serum DHT levels would be lowered by 60 to 70%, which is almost the same as with the oral finasteride 1 milligram and the scalp DHT minus 70% respectively. And now remember what I said at the start of the video. Topical finasteride concentrations with a number that is greater than 1 after the decimal point, they're essentially going to be using the same as using finasteride orally. And I can prove it to you by looking at the values in the fourth group where Casarini's research used 0.4 milliliter of this 0.25% solution, which is essentially 0.9 milligram oral finasteride equivalent and the DHT suppression in this group was minus 48% systemically which already comes slowly but surely to the 65 to 70% suppression of oral finasteride. Talking about the systemic DHT suppression. And now you probably understand that the higher concentration of your topical finasteride you use and the more of it you use, the higher your total finasteride load or TFL will be per day. And thus you are more likely to experience side effects. And that means even on topical finasteride. So why paying premium price for a topical finasteride that could cost you twice to four times more per month compared to an oral finasteride monthly supply if the side effect profile is essentially the same or very similar, as well as the efficacy. Where is the win? And that's a great question. And to be able to answer this question more clearly, we actually look at our third study from 2021 that actually compared the 0.25% topical finasteride to one milligram oral finasteride. This study also had a placebo group and it was a 24 week study where they were able to conclude the following. The study found no serious adverse events related to the treatment. It even measured the finasteride blood plasma concentrations in users on topical versus oral finasteride and found that maximum plasma finasteride concentrations were more than 100 times lower in the topical finasteride group compared to oral finasteride, showing also very minimal leakage of topical finasteride into your system, which is great news. They used a spray, 0.25% topical finasteride, and applied one to eight sprays of the solution. Each spray was able to deliver 50 microliters of solutions, which is equivalent to 0.114 milligram of finasteride, all the way to 0.912 milligram of finasteride. So essentially they used a very, very wide range from 0.11 to 0.91 milligram in those one to eight sprays. And these were the results. This topical finasteride solution achieved statistically significant target area hair count improvements after 24 weeks together with oral finasteride compared to placebo, as you can see in this graphic. Topical finasteride in the system and reduction from the baseline in mean serum DHT concentration was lower, 34.5% on topical finasteride versus 55.6% on oral finasteride. And now if we collect the data from all of these three studies where by the way it was found that number one, no people using topical finasteride in concentrations from 0.01% to 0.09% had side effects. And number two, if we specifically choose concentrations with maximum scalp DHT suppression and minimum systemic DHT level suppression, we will get a range from roughly 0.01% to 0.04% 
topical finasteride, which would be an equivalent to roughly 0.1 milligram to 0.4 milligram of oral finasteride per day. This range represents your ideal TFL or total finasteride load per day in order to minimize finasteride presence in your blood, minimize the DHT suppression in the blood and maximize the scalp DHT suppression all at the same time. And for me, this constitutes the ideal concentration for a topical finasteride. Starting from 0.01%, because that was the lowest concentration that has been studied in an actual study with a placebo group where they actually got improvements and also tried to detect the DHT level changes. And I decided to stop at 0.04% because of the second study where it seems like this is where you maximize your scalp DHT suppression while still minimizing the systemic DHT suppression. Here is actually my free calculator that will help you calculate your current total finasteride load in three steps. And on my website, if you go to letsgethair.com slash TF calculator, you will be able to plug in all of your details uh, from your current topical finasteride. And this thing will pretty much tell you whether you are in that microdosing range or not. So check out letsgethair.com TF calculator. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Please like this video if it helped you out and I'm going to see you soon in another video. Take care.